Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Amy, if you're new to my channel, and it's been a minute since we did our last Q&A, so I thought we would answer some of your most burning questions. By Alexandra B. I am thinking of getting the Coco Handle or the Chanel 19. Which one should I get first? And very similar question from Vernis Toe. I needed this video. I've been debating about this bag because it seems too formal and she was referring to the Coco handle. But after seeing you wear it in so many outfits, you've convinced me. I'm debating if this bag would be worth buying if I already have a Chanel 19 since they're both very similar where you can wear crossbody and on the crook of the arm. These were the two bags mentioned in the questions. Coco handle versus Chanel 19. Both of mine are in the small size. So this is the smallest size 19. Um, also sometimes referred as medium, but it really is the small size. And then uh, this one is the new small size, uh, also referred as the old mini. Not the new extra mini. It's the old mini current small size. All right. I don't think that these two bags are similar at all. Vernice was commenting on the video where I showed my Coco Handle bags and styled it in several different outfits. I think I had a total of at least eight outfits. Of course, the Coco Handle looks best when it's girly with a dress or even dressy or even professional, actually. Uh, it's just a little bit more put together because the bag style is so elegant and so structured and... Um, just has that kind of more serious look, I suppose. But it doesn't mean that you cannot dress it super, super casual. Anyway, to come back to your question, Vernice, I don't think that these two bags are similar at all. <laughs> Not even a little bit. I guess what you mean by, you know, top handle and the fact that with the new uh, strap extenders, which I did show in that video, um, it would allow you to wear this size Coco Handle crossbody, which normally you wouldn't be able to because this size Coco Handle, the small size, uh, the old mini, has a very, very short strap. So the strap length um, is, uh, I mean, the drop is only 18 inches, which is very short. And on top of that, it has this very hard structured handle, which would just sit quite high on you when you crossbody it. Really, really depends on the collection that you have at the moment, as well as what do you need these bags for? Because I tend to use the 19 more because this is such an everyday style. Yes, my new series will also include the Chanel 19. Obviously with any Chanel bags, they are super versatile and nowadays there's no rules to fashion, which is why even when I was wearing this with my hoodie and with my sweatpants, it didn't look too bad. It actually looks really good. I guess I know what you mean, but at the same time, what do you need these bags for? I think if I had to redo it, which one would I choose first? Oh my gosh, it's so hard because this one is still quite well priced. It's one of those bags that are worth it price-wise, but it's just that I don't use the Coco Handle as often as I use this. Like I say all the time with Chanel, there is no telling which bag will be available when because their stocks are very limited. These two bags or any of their bags are usually very sought after, especially the ones that look more classic. Um, they look more classic. They're not the classic bag, but they are more or less permanent. Like this is a permanent style. This is a seasonal style, but it still comes back very, very often. So it's almost like a classic. So in a way, these sell out all the time. So it also depends on which one is available first. So it depends on the stock availability, which season it is, and if you're there at the right time to buy it because they're not always available. So yeah, it depends on that too. But <laughs> I guess I'll choose the Chanel 19 first as of today and the Coco Handle second. Next question by Shanna. Amy, you make me really want the Coco Handle. Yes, the size is perfect. Again, she's referring to this one, to the same video I did. Not the new mini, which cannot fit an HB phone. If given the choice, the mini top handle, the most recent season, or this Coco handle, which one would you choose? If you absolutely are set on a particular season, 
let's say this one, then sure, go ahead and, and try to find it. Uh, obviously, it's going to be pre-loved. Obviously, because it's pre-loved, it might have some wear and tear. You might pay a premium because you are trying to source it from someone else, most likely from a consignment or from a reseller. Um, aside from that, I guess you are getting exactly what you want. So if it's the color that you want in an older season, which makes you happy, then go for it, you know. I guess my personal preference is not to chase an item that is already long gone. I try my best to just buy it when it's the current season uh, or if it's just past and I know that it's still around, if I looked hard enough, I will try to get it. I have used personal shoppers like that in the past when it's just past the current season, but it's still around. I know somewhere in the world they might still have it, so I do try it sometimes. I don't prefer it. Again, like I said, you are paying a premium for it and it's not me going over and inspecting the bag so you're kind of relying on someone else's service it's not my preferred method which is why i tend to not chase an older style there are a lot of bags that i wanted from the past but i just i kind of gave up chasing them because of those reasons sometimes it's just not worth the extra premium sometimes it is yeah just never say never it's so hard because you know at the end of the day these are just handbags and you don't need to own everything in the world, like I said earlier. And there's a lot of handbags in the past seasons that I haven't been able to get. And it's okay because there's always going to be something newer that you want more. And it's always evolving. Collections evolve. So um, if you absolutely, absolutely want an older or a past season color, whatnot, style, try your best and if you're not able to get it then maybe consider the current season because why not <laughs> okay next question by m valera how are the stickers on your personalized never full holding up are the colors fading easy to get scratched i am planning to buy the never full too but anxious about the stickers wear and tear she is referring to my review video of my personalized My World Tour Never Fall, which I custom chose the interior color, the leather trims, as well as the stickers on it. I don't wear this bag super often. I said many, many times that my Never Falls are my larger bags, therefore, they don't get a lot of wear. Just because I don't really carry a lot, I use my Never Falls only if I have road trips or big errand days, which I'm not getting a lot of, especially last year, the pandemic year and this year, obviously. So keep that in mind. These are not my everyday bags. The way I use my bags could be very, very different from how you use yours. And also it depends on where you live. I think I repeat that a lot that, uh, you know, it also depends on the environment of where you live. I mean humidity, how much sun you get, how cold it is, how wet it is. All those things, all those are factors that can contribute to wear and tear of your bags because it can dry out the leather, it can dry out the, um, the canvases. Or if it's super humid, that's like the complete opposite where you actually have to remove moisture from the air or from around your bag. So that in itself is also another challenge which i don't have so if you're in malaysia singapore all these really really hot climate areas all year round there's other ways of taking care of your items so my point is my bag is really really nice still like looking almost brand new i have had sticker items meaning limited edition items with stickers on on them and i've never really had tons of issues with them. I've had a little pouch before called the Mila Clutch, which I have used a lot more. And it's very close to the body. I kind of wear under, you know, on my armpit type of thing. It's very thin. And so that one did get a bit more wear and tear. It is also one of those items that I kind of toss inside my bags and I really didn't try to baby it too much. And there was a little bit of wear and tear, but even then 
even when I sold it, it still looked very, very decent. And that is me comparing small details at this point. Like when I say wear and tear, it's like really, really minor things that a normal person wouldn't even consider them to be super used, if that makes any sense to you. So um, yeah, as far as my collectible limited edition sticker items from LV, I've only had good experience. And I trust that if you ever have any issues with yours, that LV will take care of you. I think usually they say within the first year, they'll just um, for sure take care of you. Um, and if it's beyond and above that, they will look at how your bag is worn to judge, to kind of judge how much you've used the item. Because if they can see that, say your straps are very well used and everything, uh, or the canvas is very well used, then they can also say that it's normal wear and tear because you have used your item a lot. If you're very sort of averse to wear and tear in general, if you're someone who just wants your things to look completely brand new, it is almost impossible. You have to have a level of acceptance that just because it's luxury and you're paying a lot of money doesn't mean that it'll stay perfect forever. It, you still have to be reasonable and have a level of, of acceptance of how things should normally look like. And as long as you take care of your things, they will look decent. Uh, <laughs> they are well made, but they're not indestructible. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. If you're risk averse, just get the normal one. Don't get the limited edition ones. Then at least you won't have the issue of uh, the stickers coming off or fading over time. Next question by Gigi. Are the Hermes silk scarves better than the LV shawls? I know that the shawls snags very easily. Wondering if the silk scarves snag as much. Would you recommend a Chanel silk scarf or an Hermes silk scarf? Are Chanel silk scarves warm enough for the winter? I'm looking to buy a timeless piece but cannot decide. You guys are really making me take out every single item, but I am happy to show you. Okay, so my oldest shawl or scarf item is from LV and this is the monogram denim version. Here is a close up. And yes, these are notorious for snagging. Um, mine is okay. I have worn this one quite a bit when I first got it. I'm wearing it less now and I typically wear it in the summer actually. So with the LV scarf, they snag very easily, meaning that, you know, if you have any rings or if you have any zippers on your jackets or even sometimes your nails, if they're sharp, it can get caught on the fabric very easily. Aside from that, do I still love this scarf and would I recommend it? Yes and no, because um, like I said, when I first got this scarf, I loved it. I wore it a lot, especially in the summer when it's still quite breezy and cool here in Vancouver summers and springtime. I tend to wear less of my scarves during the winter, if that makes any sense, because one of your questions was whether it's warm enough. In the winter, it's almost too cold to just rely on a piece of silk but if for example this one which is my Chanel scarf this is a lavalier scarf so this is almost like a piece of ornament like an accessory which you wear around your neck and have it almost as a tie so it's almost like part of the outfit which obviously provides more warmth because your neck is covered so in that sense, yes, it will be warm enough because that's just part of the outfit. You might still be, uh, you know, you might still have your big collar from your coat or another scarf on top of that. So in that sense, yes, they are warm enough, but no, if they're really trying to wear this as the only winter scarf and it really depends on how cold your winters get. So here in Vancouver, um, typically I would say in the winters, it's probably in the, in Celsius, maybe like minus five, minus 10 would be considered quite cold here. Um, in Montreal, where I used to live, minus 30 is the norm. So <laughs> it really depends on what kind of winter you're talking about. Now between Chanel scarves, I mean Chanel silk and Hermes silk, I can already tell you, and I know all of you will agree if you own both, 
that Hermes silk, the material itself, if you just to if you were to just compare them, the material of this is stronger. It's thicker. I don't know if you can hear the noise. It has that uh, quality of just like a thicker fabric as compared to a Chanel one. So I have right here also a 90, same size, 90 centimeter square from Chanel. You can hear the difference. This one has more of a softer touch. It's kind of like a more fluid, um, thinner fabric. Whereas this one, same size, but it's thicker, like even just as, as you touch it and as you handle it, um, they're both soft, but this one just has that substance. I would say Hermes silk is superior. And in terms of shawls, between the Hermes shawl, which I have one here, this is a cashmere Hermes shawl. I'm just using these random dust bags. There are just so many very, very pretty designs from Hermes. They are very pricey. And I think if I had to redo it all together, I probably would have gone with Hermes first instead of LV. But no regrets at all because you have to start somewhere, right? Next question by Elaine Choi. About Chanel costume jewelry, does it ever tarnish or fade since it is not real gold? I'm going to link my entire costume jewelry video right here. And I love my costume jewelry from Chanel especially. The majority of my collection are earrings. Um, don't know if you can tell. I especially love the more statement pieces. So this is one of them for sure. I don't think there is a way for me to replace my Chanel earring collection with just fine jewelry. I just think that it's very, very hard to do that with fine jewelry. I think there is a time and place for fine jewelry and there is a time and place for costume jewelry. So to answer your question, do they tarnish? Absolutely, yes. But if you take care of them, they will last you a very, very long time and they won't tarnish as easily. Um, will they tarnish for sure? No, because I haven't had any tarnishing. With costume jewelry, you can't be as carefree, meaning I probably wouldn't want to get this bracelet totally wet when I wash my hands. I'll try to avoid the charm and the actual bracelet as much as possible. Same with the earrings. When I'm done wearing them at the end of the day, I will wipe them down. I'm going to repeat myself again. It also depends on your environment, where you live. If you live in a very, very humid area and the temperature and the humidity constantly changes, maybe it's not as easy for you to take care of your items because you'll always have to regulate the humidity and the temperature of your room where you store your items. But that is almost like a given, not just for costume jewelry, it's for everything. Otherwise, everything else will mold too, even your clothes. Do you know what I mean? So yes, they can tarnish if you don't take care of them properly. But if you do, they will stay really, really beautiful for a very long time. Next question by Luxurious Vibes. Could you do a video on the top 10 non-designer clothing brands that are high quality? Okay, um, I can give you just off the top of my head the um, uh, places that I like to shop at. With Maj and Sandro, I like to buy their more sort of uh, classic pieces such as uh, denim or I have a very beautiful leather jacket from Sandro that is it just looks very classic and um, even though it does have fringes, it's just, you can never go wrong with a good leather jacket, like classic cut. Um, Self-portrait wise, I love their dresses, obviously, and some of their really beautiful tops. Self-portrait has its signature in that the details are very feminine and girly. Biggest challenge for self-portrait is whether you fit their uh, body shape because they do use very thin models um, and tall models. Uh, Banana Republic, Club Monaco, Nordstrom, they are in your typical mall. I would say that in general, 
I would try to find my classic classic pieces there. So like plain t-shirts. Uniqlo is also a very good option for classics and very, very simple basics. And I know that you might not agree with Uniqlo being a brand that is good quality, but you'd be surprised at how many times a lot of my favorite, mo most basic pieces are from Uniqlo. And I'm talking about just plain t-shirts or even just their collaboration t-shirts, um, sweatshirts. I love a lot of their sweatshirts, put something on and get out the door type of thing. A lot of those things are from Uniqlo. Uh, I love buying kids t-shirts there as well. So there's a lot of great stuff, honestly, that you can find at Uniqlo. They're obviously not going to be your best cut, well thought out design. No, nothing like that. But the very basic stuff and at a very good price, even at regular price, it's super good to find them at Uniqlo. Um, Zara and even H&M, sometimes you can score really beautiful items there and you have to pick and choose very, very carefully. So with H&M, I don't shop there myself, but I do buy all the baby stuff for my nephews and nieces there. They have extremely cute stuff for babies. I don't know how they make babies and kids clothes so well compared to the adult stuff. Like their adult stuff, I just cannot bother with. But their baby baby and kids section is just so cute and well priced. Zara is one of those stores where you can find almost like fashion week type of styles there. They're not going to be your best quality. However, what I like to do at Zara is you just have to really pick and choose certain things. So I love buying jackets there because their blazers are always really on point. Like the the style, like the very current, very trendy styles are very on point. Um, they're not gonna have the best cutting or sizing, but they'll have very good colors. They'll have very good sort of very fashion week looking styles. They're gonna be more trendy. And so it's kind of like a balance. Sometimes you don't wanna buy the very expensive ready to wear designer trendy items you can find them at zara for a fraction of the cost obviously it's fast fashion i'm trying to avoid it as much as possible but once in a while it's fine top shop i like their jeans their denims and uh levi's i also like their denims there's also a couple more local brands in canada that i personally love so makaj is one of them makaj is actually a montreal brand they um, only started expanding in the past few years. Now they are international and they are mainly a leather and wool sort of winter garment. What I love about them is their attention to detail and their cutting. They are, like I said, a Montreal brand. So I've worn Bacash since early 2000s. I mean, because it was from there. It's a local brand. Uh, and now they've expanded and they are pretty big now. They are international. They're even in Italy, New York, uh, all the big cities, I think, know about the brand now. Uh, of course, after they've expanded, their production has also moved to overseas. They used to be all be made in Canada before, which I actually liked more. Now I like it less, but it's still a really great brand if you wanted to get something more luxurious, but still local. And also Aritzia is a local brand as well. I guess Aritzia itself is not the brand, but they do have a lot of the sort of in-house, not in-house, but like just a lot of the, they carry a lot of the local brands. They used to also carry Makaj. And no, I don't love everything from there, but from the point of view of some of the basics, so a lot of the my body suits and also a lot of my winter coats, I love their winter coats from there, um, especially the brand Babaton that they carry. It's one of my favorite brands and I always, almost always buy their coats there now. Definitely cannot not mention Mattress Fashion, my uh, Luisa Vioroma, Essence, My Teresa, Farfetch, uh, Netter Porter. Those are really, really great sites to find your designer ready to wear pieces. Their prices are usually a little bit more competitive. Corinne P, since your ring collection has grown, could you please 
provide your recommendation on what designs are best suited for which fingers and also can we wear them all the time even to the shower um, will there be any issues putting hand lotion and sanitizer on them as of right now I have these few pieces that are my luxury fine jewelry um, Hermes ring Kelly ring CDC ring from Hermes JUC small uh, so the thinner version ring and love bracelets small now in terms of the rings yes you can wash your hands with them no problem because it's fine gold 18 karat gold uh, mine are all in rose gold by the way but depending on your skin tone maybe yellow gold is better for you or white gold this diamond ring right here is my own wedding band obviously it depends on your hands and your fingers because my hands will look very different from yours i tend to have more sort of fleshy fingers if that makes any sense um like i have pointy sort of slender fingers if you remove arthritis from it but from the point of view of you know joint to flesh ratio i do have fleshier hands um, because i know a lot of people have more bony structure i have a very uh, small bone structure myself which is why my wrists are so tiny um, but i do have some flesh on those fingers so i would say that if you have similar hands to me or similar fingers to me i tend to prefer thicker rings on i guess maybe like ring finger and middle finger just because those are kind of like my longest slender most slender looking fingers i don't wear anything on my pinky but you know that's just my preference and for the index finger i find that because it's the fleshiest finger of all um, aside from the thumb which i also don't wear an, a ring there i find that for the fleshiest biggest finger of my hand i prefer wearing a very thin ring which is why i chose the juc because i feel like anytime you have a bigger finger the the thinner the ring the more comfortable it is the more slender that finger or the more bony that finger then you can get away with a more thicker ring if that makes any sense that's just what i've observed about myself i think for me on my ring finger i can almost wear any rings because it is the most slender finger and the smallest finger of all my uh, well aside from the pinky but like it's the most sort of slenderest more slender looking finger the most pointy and everything uh, which is why i can get away with any rings but some people have very very bony structure but not a lot of meat on their fingers and for them i find that they can get away with any sort of ring as well like they can wear also very thick rings on their index whereas if i wore a very thick ring on my index i think it would look so weird and fat and terrible <laughs> if that makes any sense uh so yeah that's just my preference in a way but also um no worries about washing your hands putting hand sanitizer uh, all that gunk it's going to accumulate obviously but you can wash it off easily with soap and water and um, yeah you can do shower everything no problem not that i would with my rings especially because it's kind of uncomfortable to have rings all the time i don't mind my bracelet as much but ring wise i do remove them especially the thicker rings i like to remove them as soon as i come home but like the thinner ring i don't mind having it on during the day but i still remove it when i'm ready to go to bed jennifer june i'm glad that you reviewed the bracelet i'm also a 13.5 centimeter wrist i heard that cartier can also do a 14 centimeter but maybe that won't be but maybe it would be too tight but i do want to just quickly say that even if you have the same size wrist as me it doesn't mean that we have the same bone structure still like I said earlier, I think I have a smaller bone frame, if that makes sense, uh, which is why my bones are smaller. But it still depends on the rest of your build. So even though my wrists are small, I do have flesh. <laughs> In other words, I do have skin and fat. So <laughs> obviously we do all have them, but some people are may have the same size 
centimeter wrist, but they might be more bony and less flesh. So it can look totally different on you and also depending on the thickness of your wrists. Because I think for me, my wrists are really small this way. Um, which is why I've always had such a hard, hard problem finding a bangle that fits me. So this 15 centimeter is perfect. I actually originally tried it on my smallest wrist, which is my non-dominant wrist. And I decided to wear it on my dominant wrist instead after I came home because this wrist is actually still smaller than this wrist. And yet this one can still turn, but not as easily. It can, it can sort of go sideways, but um, I have to do it myself. So I prefer if it doesn't do that easily, which is why I decided not to wear it on this wrist. Um, but mind you, in the future, when I add a second piece, I'll still want something here, but I won't necessarily go down a size either. I think besides the fact that it's not their standard sizes that they offer, which is kind of annoying to have to order something even smaller, unless it's really ridiculously big, but the 15 is not ridiculously big on mine. I think the general rule is that uh, as long as it's within the two centimeter um, difference, depending on the season of the year. So I bought my bracelet in the spring, so it was still not hot, but a tiny bit cool sometimes. So the bracelet can move a little bit more, but I'm sure in the summer as it gets hotter and your skin and your your body just swells a little bit more just because it's hot because there's more circulation in your um, in your body so even the bracelet will feel sort of tighter in general i feel like as long as you're within the two centimeter size difference then i wouldn't go down a size necessarily because like i said in the summer you'll be sticky you'll be sweaty your flesh and your arm might swell a little bit like a very tiny bit it's not going to be enough to be to be stuck like it's not gonna be it's got it's not gonna be so much that it will be not fitting you obviously it's not gonna be like that but you definitely want a little bit of leeway for it to have more movement and for it to feel comfortable and also one thing that i want to mention which nobody talks about in their reviews is that you want your bracelet to have a little bit of room because most of the time, I actually prefer when my bracelet sits right here. And I didn't know that before because nobody talked about in their reviews. But the reason why you want it to be stuck on your arm, like halfway through your arm, is because I don't want it to bang against every surface that my hands reach. You want your bracelet to stay stationary as much as possible so that whenever you move your arm, you're not constantly bumping into every single thing. Same thing with when you wash your hands, you don't always want to get it wet. So there is a benefit of your bracelet having movement, not so that it can move all the time, but so that it can rest a little bit lower on your wrist. And last but not least from Fashion Cabin, maybe Prada and Valentino will make a future collaboration because did you guys hear about what happened with them recently? One of the Valentino warehouses caught fire, burned to the ground, and Prada heard about it, offered them one of their own warehouses that they weren't currently using. They helped them out. So Fashion Cabin, hi babe. Um, she was uh, commenting on one of our luxury live show where we talked about the newest collections, especially the portion where I presented the Gucci hack. So the Gucci Fall Winter 2021 collection was a mix of Gucci's ready to wear as well as their hack of Valentino's most iconic pieces and um, silhouettes and also the logo. So they literally like put the two Gucci Balenciaga together. It's really, really cool, honestly, to look at. Um, if you don't know already you can watch that luxury live show it's at the beginning anyway perhaps that's also the future of how collaborations would be just major major big brands together collaborating in the future even though this was not a true collaboration from the two brands but i'm sure they had to get consent from the balenciaga to do it even though it was just gucci's collection uh, it just sparked a lot of chit chat and uh, a lot of maybe future opportunities or the direction of how 
fashion will collaborate in the future. And no, I did not know that Valentino's warehouse caught fire. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. I wonder what burned to the ground. Is it everything, including handbags ready to wear and all their material, raw materials? That would be so sad, but I guess uh, the fact that Prada helped them out, maybe we shall see if there's going to be a future collab from the two brands. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this Q&A. I feel so, so rusty. I know that you don't see the, all the behind the scenes, but I have been filming for the past hour and a half, so I am totally parched. I hope that you enjoyed this Q&A. If you have any more questions for my next Q&A, just let me know down below in the comment section. And uh, if I have enough, I will do a Q&A more frequently. If you're new to my channel and you like this type of content, not just Q&As, but just talking about luxury and fashion in general, you know where to subscribe. I would love to have you back. And I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye guys.